Okay, hi, welcome to example eight in our matrices topic. We're starting to get to the real kind of cutting edge of this topic. We're going to find the inverse of a matrix. We talked about the determinant being able to uh, tell us if a matrix has an inverse or not. So what's, what's that about and what is the inverse of a matrix? Well, if we think about inverse and what we might know about inverse operations or even inverse fractions, it's there's a certain uh, kind of oppositeness about it, isn't there? So we talk about subtraction being the inverse operation of addition. If we have a fraction like uh, two thirds, we think of its inverse uh, or reciprocal as being three over two. And the nice thing about inverse fractions like that if you multiply a fraction by its inverse you notice what you get you get uh, two thirds times three over two six over six you get one okay so the idea of multiplying a number by its inverse means that you get the answer one and in matrix algebra is exactly just the same if you have a matrix a and you multiply it by its inverse matrix you'll get the identity matrix i which we know is just the matrix equivalent of one. We use the in inverse matrix effectively to divide by a matrix, and we'll, we'll explain a little bit more about that later, but that's the idea. So let's have a look at two by two matrices. It's a wee bit easier than it is for a three by three. So if we've got some matrix A, B, C, D, then in order to work out its inverse matrix, which is A, and it's a wee negative one, it's not to the power negative one, well, I suppose it technically could be one over A, but we call it A negative one, the inverse matrix of A, is, well, there's two elements to it, okay? The first is there's a fraction here, one over the determinant of A. So we actually use that number in this calculation. So whatever the determinant of A is, if it was zero, of course, then it makes it very clear that there's no inverse because you can't divide by zero. If the determinant of A is not zero, we can go ahead and find it. So we're multiplying that fraction by a matrix. But if you look at it, it's different to the original matrix A. How is it different? Well, it's different in two ways. First of all, the leading diagonal AD is inverse, or it's swapped around. They swap around the two elements, A and D. And then if you have a look at the other two, which are B and C, here's B, and here's C, do you notice that they're not, their places aren't swapped, but they're multiplied by negative one. So if it was negative, uh, a negative value in the first matrix, then it would be positive uh, or vice versa. You multiply the value by negative one. We then, we can multiply that fraction in, or we can leave it as it is, but that would give us our inverse matrix. Okay, let's go ahead and see if that pattern works in real life. So example eight, calculate the inverse matrix of A. And not only that, it says show that A times its inverse is I. So we're gonna show that it actually works, okay? So let us start the process. So A is the matrix two, one, three, four. If we're asked to calculate the inverse, we technically have to show that it does have one first in other words, we're going to find the determinant, and it's going to be useful for us anyway. So the determinant of A is going to be 2 times 4, which is 8, minus 3 times 1, which is 3, equals 5. Okay? And we can write down, if we're being proper, as the determinant of A is not 0, we can say that the inverse of A exists. Okay? A is non singular. So let's go ahead and work that out. From the, the last slide there, you could see that the inverse matrix A is 1 over the determinant. I'm not going to write it out. 1 over 5 multiplied by this other matrix. It's going, things are going to be a bit uh, swapped around here. So what do we do? We swap around the elements in the principal diagonal, so that becomes 4 and 2 instead of 2 and 4. Multiply the other numbers by negative 1, so we get negative 1 and negative 3. We could leave it like that, or it would also be fine to then multiply the fifth in. The only problem with that is it's a bit of a footer because who 
who likes having fractions in a matrix? Not me. But I'm just making the point that you could actually write it like that. Okay. I'm going to use and stick to use the, the fifth as effective as a common factor there. Okay. Because it's going to work easier. So that's either of these would be acceptable values for the inverse matrix. Show that A times its inverse gives you I. Well, let's write it down A times the inverse matrix. If I write out the elements, 2, 1, 3, 4, multiplied by, I'm going to use this form here, so multiplied by a fifth of 4, negative 1, negative 3, 2. Now, According to the rules of multiplying matrices, the order of them matters. So we keep the, the two matrices in the correct order. It doesn't matter about the order of constant terms. So although this constant multiplier here is technically multiplying the second one, it's okay if I actually move it to the beginning. So I'm going to take my time. I'm in no rush. So I'm just going to literally rewrite it with the fifth at the front. Um, and that's negative 3, 2. Now I'm going to think about multiplying those two matrices together. They're 2 by 2 matrices, so they're conformable. Um, therefore, what for the first element, it's 2 times 4 is 8, my, or plus 1 times 3 is negative 3. So 8 add negative 3 is 5. For the one below it, I'm going to use 3 times 4 is 12, plus 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. So 4, it's a 12 minus 12 is 0. Up second column, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, plus 2 is 0. And for the last one here, 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Add 4 times 2 is 8, negative 3 add 8 is positive 5. And you can see here, if I multiply a fifth by each of the elements, in the matrix, I get 1, 0, 0, 1, which of course is I. So A times its inverse gives you 1, 0, 0, 1, which is equal to I, which is the whole point. Any matrix multiplied by its inverse should give us the value 1, or in our case, the unit matrix. Okay? Now go and do that for 2 by 2 matrices. The the next example, 3x3 three three matrices, is pretty epic um, and it requires a good knowledge of um, Gaussian elimination. So if you haven't done that, then you may want to skip that, otherwise it won't make much sense. Okay, but hopefully that has helped you. Go and practice.